topic in the world of the airports that is truly important. One of them, one of these top three at the moment is SMS system. Not only due to the importance it has, but also due to the complexity that many airports, the way many airports see it, it's a topic that many times we believe it's not necessarily complex for the airports to implement SMS. Uh, until February of this year, I was CEO of Montego Bay Airport in Jamaica. And then I realized of the importance of uh, using SMS in a paused, uh, relaxed manner with proper routes, properly routed. So I worked hand in hand with Mrs. Senora, Mrs. Daniela Roach, who's with us in this seminar. So this is why she's here. She's uh, an international level figure uh, in reference of SMS. And we have with us too, Maria Elena Sandoval, who's a colleague of ACI LAC in Panama. Maria Elena is also an expert in SMS. Uh, she's done lots of work at the, in the Panama airports. I respect her a lot because she knows the topic deeply. And we also have Rodrigo Oliveiro with us. Ribeiro, excuse me, we felt that he knows uh, this topic very well. I don't know you personally, Rodrigo, but we thank you very much for the fact of accompanying us. I don't want to take any, any more time. I just want to reinforce the importance of SMS for the airports of the region and encourage all of you to participate actively in this webinar, even though we can speak uh, personally. But uh, without any further ado, I will uh, leave Francisco with you. He will explain how this webinar will function. I've said it in Spanish. Next time I'll read it in English. Thanks to all of you. See you later. Thank you, Rafael, for the brief introduction. As you have seen on your screens, you have been able to, to see and test the chat function and Q&A. Uh, they're deactivated for the time being. So we encourage you to send your questions to this address on the screen. And as much as possible, at the end of the presentations, uh, we hope the panelists can answer the questions. Likewise, as you have been able to test, this time we have simultaneous interpretation. On the lower part of the Zoom screen, you can uh, choose your preference language, if you prefer Spanish or English. One of the options you have is to uh, mute original audio. In this way, you will not hear the, the panelist and the interpreter at the same time. Without any further ado, I want to introduce Rodrigo Ribeiro, a specialist in uh, operational uh, safety. Um, he will give us a presentation on the applicable norms on SMS. Thank you. Go ahead, Rodrigo. Hi. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you, Francisco. It's a true pleasure being with you. Thanks for the invitation. I will speak a bit um, thinking on the side of the state, on the civil aviation authorities, that are the ones that maintain the regional cooperation system for operational safety aspects. It's a system that uh, uh, joins two member states, uh, additionally Cuba, and we in the system that is uh, added to the regional ICAO office. We have the mandate of assisting the states. So we uh, speak a lot with the civil aviation authorities. Then we have Annex 9 and the relationships of SMS and the certification process for aerodromes. Annex uh, 19 is the document that compiles 
all the SARPs relative to operational safety of ICAO. So here we compile all standards and recommendable measures that obviously SMS in ICAO started way before Annex 19. But Annex 19, uh, Annex 19 brought new things in how operational uh, safety aspects are seen. It brought new aspects. So the Annex 19, if we look at the structure of this Annex, basically it's a short Annex, it's not long, and, this, and the system for operational safety is Chapter 4 of the Annex and Appendix 2. But the Annex involves responsibilities of the states, operational safety, and there's another part uh, that is very important, which is compilation, sharing, interchanging data on operational safety. So for the states and the uh, civil, civil aviation uh, authorities who are certifying, supervising the operators of the airdromes in every state, There's a structure within ICAO that, re that relates directly to concepts. One is supervision of operational safety because the state system for operational safety, state, state safety program in English, together with the system for operational safety, which is SMS that is better known it fused them together, merged them together, and there's direct obligation from the operators here. In this system, these two systems are directly related. So the state, as a regulator, has the obligation to make the supervision for operational safety in their own state. So the government, civil aviation authorities, all the uh, corresponding re entities. They have international commitments together with ICAO and the other states, uh, state members of ICAO and with the uh, international agreements. So the states impose to the suppliers of uh, uh, civil aviation, that they maintain their operations with a system of operational saf safety, which is SMS. SMS. They, it must be harmonious with the state systems. So the strategic objectives and operational objectives of the government systems are in agreement with the regulations and rules that are part of the SMS of the different states. There's a note in Annex 19, and this is for the aerodrome operators directly, this uh, note here. No resolution of this Annex can transfer to the state the responsibilities of the provider or business operator. So even though the annex tells us about obligations of the state in supervising operational safety, managing operational safety is the responsibility of the aviation service providers, be it maintenance, be it an airline, be it a school of civil aviation, or be it an aerodrome operator. And SMS has the objective that managing operational safety is as professional as possible. SMS is here, has been here for many years, 
but the air drums uh, areas are a bit more immature uh, or have not implanted it so officially from what I can see here. But we need to, but we need to understand that managing operational safety is, does exist. All aerodrome operators, everyone working in operational areas of an aerodrome, everyone in operations, one of the big concerns of is operational safety. But SMS is a way of having a record, a methodology, a pattern on how to manage operational safety. So SMS, in order to implement Annex 19 states that there is orientation in document 9859 and that SMS of the certified airdrome operator, and there's a link here with Annex 14. This is where it states that the states must certify their international aerodromes. SMS must be acceptable for the state and which is responsible for certifying the aerodrome. A service provider uh, for, it could be anyone for an aerodrome. This, is a, this, this doesn't apply only for aerodromes. It applies for all civil aviation industry or for all types of services. It's established according to the elements uh, of Annex 19, Appendix 2. Very important. This is something that for the operators must be clear. And for civil aviation, we always work with them on this aspect and it's implicit in the Annex. SMS will be adjusted to the size or dimension and complexities of the products or services of the service providers. SMS includes components, elements that are the same. We will uh, look into them later, but how do we implant each one of them? It depends on the complexity and the dimension or size of the supplier. The state must ensure that the supplier elaborates a plan to facilitate it, uh, using SMS, even though we should all have SMS in all aerodromes, although some aerodromes are a bit late here. These are the components and elements of SMS. This is in the Annex, uh, Annex 2, it's uh, set. Uh, you cannot change anything here. It's an international regulation. The states must comply with this and they must replicate this in their national norms. But how do we implement this? How do I identify hazards or dangers? How do I maintain uh, danger possibilities? And uh, how do I... Uh, manage changes how do i disseminate how do i promote my sms which is component four how do i communicate this depends on the structure if an aerodrome is small there are some uh, international aerodromes that have 10 operations per day maybe sometimes we have uh, an aircraft uh, uh, once every so often on the platform the administrative structure, maybe 10 persons, 20 people working, uh, operating the aerodrome. Some other aerodromes have thousands of persons, dozens, uh, sometimes more than 100, 200 uh, aircraft parked or uh, being received at the same time in the platform. Obviously, the tools and processes and procedures will be different in order to achieve the same objectives. What are these objectives? 
objectives that are related to the component elements of SMS. Annex 14 states, as part of the certification process, the states must award a certificate. Before awarding this certificate, they must accept or approve a manual that, uh, for uh, operational safety. So this annex is specific for aerodr aerodromes, and it links that the aer aerodromes manual and the certification process must be conditioned that the aerodrome operator presents a manual. And this manual, as part of the annex, must include the operational safety system of the operator. And the uh, uh, note in Annex 14, this is sent, this will be part of Annex 19. And what are the impacts of the operational safety SMS system? And the same process for certifying aerodromes, which is not the objective uh, here or specifically speaking, but certification of aerodromes involves the state ensuring, awarding the aerodrome operators a certificate that states the state carried out an evaluation, an assessment of this operator that is operating this aerodrome. And in this assessment, assessment, this operator has the proper conditions to operate, guaranteeing a proper level of operational safety. That's what the certificate states. It's a commitment of the state because the state that is, award, is awarding this under commitments assumed by the aerodrome operator. And the state, obviously, when it must certify an aerodrome, and it must, and it, when it states that that operator can operate with good operational safety, they must trust in this. And how do you trust this? The state obviously will not be 100% of the time with the operator uh, or with an inspector. The state is not an operator, but the state knows that the operator has a system, a mature system to manage operational safety. So every state, this is not defined by ICAO, every state in its national regulations defines what is the maturity level or what components or elements must be implanted with SMS with minimum conditions to award a, a certificate. This level of maturity of SMS of the operator must be considered by the state. For instance, what is necessary to award restrictions in the certification process, for instance. It's very difficult. I've, ne I've never seen one in my life, a certification process, uh, aerodrome process, where it's not necessary to award uh, uh, restrictions or others. Aerodromes have designs sometimes that do not attend all physical characteristics of Annex 14 or national norms. There are small things that must be done. Sometimes there are big deviations from uh, uh, in the length of the runway or others, sometimes obstacles since they're not complied with, there must be a process, uh, evaluation process, aeronautical process, so that the state uh, uh, provides the certificate. Once the state awards this, they are trusting in processes, processes, evaluations done by the operator. So it, it's, they can trust much more when the maturity level is very high or very mature. And also, there's a direct orientation. This still doesn't affect the South American states or Latin American countries too much, but there's something very recent. Uh, uh, document 9851 of ICAO orients the states that planning should 
the intensity of uh, the supervision I do on my aerodromes should be based on the maturity level of the SMS in countries like Canada, or I know Canada, they already started, but others totally changed their surveillance uh, oversight from traditional into uh, something that is based in uh, uh, having oversight of the SMS or the operator. The operator does its job and the state finds out whether the SMS or the operator is working properly. So now to finish Annex 19, does not include details on how SMS is implanted. This is included in document 9859, which I think Marielena will uh, present or introduce uh, this topic. Even 9859 does not detail many things. And, and, and the last edition there was uh, very important. It's it sends uh, you to the page of ICAO so on safety management, where here we do have more detailed information of good practices, of orientation, suggestions, and how to implement SMS. And last, I believe it's very interesting. One last slide I have here. And this uh, Sky Library, Skybury, a public library on uh, operational safety materials, civil aviation. There's a there's very good work done that was updated uh, with the last amendments of the annex and document 9859 by SM, by the Safety Management Corporation Group, which is a, a assessment tool of SMS. It's a tool that uh, uh, is asking questions for every element and component. And this tool is in English in this page here. We have a version in Spanish, I believe. It's still not public. Uh, but it, the states uh, have it and we can share it di directly because it belongs to the civil aviation authorities. This tool allows the operator, it's for the state too, but for the operator, it allows them to carry out a self-assessment or evaluation and a gap assessment to follow up on the implementation of SMS. So this tool seems to me a very interesting tool and I suggest that those that don't know about this tool, we are just recently working in a certification process together with Chile, in a, and we are uh, the, we're using this tool. The operator is using it for auto or self-evaluation or assessment, even though initially we need to learn how to use it, but it does bring in lots of learning information for the operator and the authority. Well, thank you very much. This is uh, my information here, my email. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Rodrigo, for your presentation. As we mentioned before, and to the benefit uh, of people that joined this webinar, maybe uh, a bit later after we had started, I remind you that the questions will be uh, answered at the end of the presentations and please send them directly to this email address and let, let us know who should answer the question. And without any further ado, I give the floor to my colleague, Marilena Sandoval, expert as Rafael just mentioned in SMS. And she will share uh, the implementation process of SMS. Go ahead, Marilena. You have the floor. 
Good afternoon, thank you, Rodrigo. Today, we wanna tell you a bit about SMS. Even though it's true, its implementation is one of the necessary requirements so that an airport can have the certification. As Rodrigo just mentioned, we and ACI LEC are interested that the member airports count with the operational safety uh, system because of the benefits it represents for safety beyond a certification. To start, it's important that we all understand the concept of operational safety. What is operational safety? It's a state and, and the risk associated with uh, aviation activities, operation of aircraft, and the support, direct support for this operation when it's reduced to an acceptable level. We can see that here, it basically tells us about reducing and controlling until we achieve an acceptable level. This is due because it's impossible to have zero risk. No organization where we have uh, a aircraft operation is free of risk. Danger is present in daily operations of an airport. What's important to know is where and when we will have an event. We call it an issue incident, depending on the degree of severity we can uh, find the answers to these questions when we implement a system like SMS correctly in our uh, operations. What is the SMS system? It's a systematic focus to manage operational safety that includes organic structures, accountability, responsibilities, policies, and necessary procedures. This is the SMS's definition. But truly, what do we understand by SMS? First, it's a system, thereby it's, a, it's, a, it's a many elements joined together that work as a whole. And it works on operational safety. So it's a, many elements related, interlinked between them so that aeronautical operations are reduced and controlled at, at an acceptable level, a level that should be instituted by every institution. The definition tells, it, tells us about the organic structures. So the system includes the different administrative units of the organization that besides being accountable, will, be, will have responsibilities, will follow up on the policies. Not that we understand a bit more SMS, it's important to know what benefits it provides it would be if, implementation besides letting us know when and where we can have an issue or a problem. Benefits of SMS. It helps us to strengthen the culture of operational safety. It allows us to understand better what happens when we interlink some components of the system. It allow, allows us to the de early detection of the dangers. We can count with a database for a better decision-making and it, for safety and possibly this will allow us financial savings. Increases in efficiency and diminishing unnecessary costs. Where is the SMS system uh, applied? SMS is applied to each one of the process, processes executed during airport services, including the services we have outsourced, like constructions within the aerodromes, maintenance that is done, etc. It's necessary to count with the definition of the system and the activities before starting with planning SMS. In this manner, we can detect with greater ease the dangers or hazards we can have during each activity. All airports can count with SMS. The answer is yes. And probably if I ask all of you, if you have an SMS in your airport, your answer will be yes. So that a SMS system is effective and can comply with its objective, it's necessary to have the following elements. One, commitment of the superior administration, CEOs, directors, managers, etc. If the person that is heading the organization is not fully committed with operational safety, if they're not convinced that the system is uh, their life insurance, there is a 95% or 
up to 100% possibilities that the system will fail too. Culture and operational safety, like all culture, this is a joint uh, knowledge, ideas, uh, habits that are characterized. In this case, the organization is the one that carries forth that must have the traditions and customs. Once again, we go to superior administration. It will depend only on the head of the organization, what culture they want on their organization. Even though it's true, culture must be the reflection of the behavior of each one of the collaborators or stakeholders. Human factors play a preponderant role here. Here, it's, uh, it's, we need to preach with the example. If I can see there's no real interest for operational safety, I will not be convinced that it's necessary. I will only do it if somebody looks at me or will ask me to. Otherwise, nothing happens. To this concept, we need to establish operational safety. This is the most complicated part of the, of the whole implementation process of SMS. We need to practice this every day. It must be part of our identity as a member of the aeronautical community. If we can establish it, we can have most of the work done. The rest of the is implementation and it's mechanical. How do we develop a safety culture that is positive so we can implement an operational safety system that is efficient? So much the administrators and collaborators must make decisions and apply measures to apply operational safety. We must create an environment where critiques are focused to change and improve, not looking for protagonism. The administration and personnel must share knowledge of the dangers and hazards that are faced by the organization and activities and the needs to manage. We must prevent at all costs uh, not to manage information properly. We must provide information and inform others on operational safety, especially we must foster practices of sharing experiences, notify errors and mistakes so we can improve our ways of uh, managing. Surveillance of operational safety. As we have mentioned, implementation of the operational safety culture is important for the efficient functioning of the system. Thereby, it's necessary that it's assessed constantly so in this manner, we can understand how people feel in regard to the organization and how they perceive operational safety. We need to identify strong and weak points, identify differences between different groups and the organization, and examine the changes in time. So we can assess the, uh, the roles maturity. We can analyze the following uh, tools carry out interviews, have interview groups, and ex examine documents. Op analyzing operational maturity can provide us with uh, very good knowledge so we can foster the uh, operational safety we desire. There's a degree of subjectivity in these evaluations, since this can reflect opinions and perceptions of people involved at a point in time. Besides, the rating of maturity of operational safety can have unforeseen consequences when the organization must have the proper rating or evaluation instead of everybody working together to understand uh, operational safety. Now we will talk a bit about human factors. We have mentioned in my presentation several times human factors, but you will wonder what human factors involve. If at the end collaborators must carry out their work uh, as, as the way they're ordered. Well, we human uh, humans are not machines. It's necessary to have the support of the superior administration in, uh, in our work environment and encourage personnel to participate actively and to contribute in managing processes for safety. We cannot obligate anyone to do anything. We must convince people that with their, uh, under their own will, they carry out their work, focused in operational safety. I like to use this example a lot because, uh, well, it's, let's say it's an incident because the runway is highly contaminated. The one in charge of inspections uh, carry out a report on this. This was raised to his boss. Obviously, since his boss is in operations, he knows the danger represents for the operation. So they do a request to hire the uh, company or outsource the company. So 
they go to the administration, but in administration, they don't know about operational safety. So it just, uh, it just placed on a drawer because, uh, well, they, their priority was just to look good with their boss. So they, the head of the office wanted to remodel their office and was not really involved, didn't have any idea of the problem this airport had in, in the runway until an accident happened. There's no isolated accident ever. There are many elements here that were not perceived properly. And with a proper culture, many will see the dangers and will inform about them before they happen. In order to improve the way in which people work, it's necessary to understand how everyone interacts with the environment, capacities, limitations, how they influence human activities. This uh, model helps us to understand much better the interaction and the impact of the collaborators with the rest of the community. Go ahead, Francisco. The S means software. It's about the relationship between people and support systems we find at, at work. For instance, manuals, elements, uh, publications, procedures, processes, and logical support uh, of computers. And it includes recent experiences, decisions, templates, vocabulary, and symbology. Hardware is the relationship between people and physical attributes or equipment, pages, and facilities. It considers ergonomic aspects of the professional equipment, the surroundings. It's about the relationship between people at the work environment. S some of these interactions are inside the institution, colleagues, supervisors, etc. Many others happen and with different organizations with different functions, air controllers, pilots, mechanics. Here we consider the importance of communications and interpersonal skills or abilities or group dynamics to determine human acts. Also within the scope of this interface, we have relationships between personnel and staff and interinstitutional culture involved. The human element is about the relationship between people and the physical surroundings. This involves aspects like temperature, environmental light, noise, quality of the air, the environment, work environment. I will tell you a bit the dilemma of uh, uh, management here. All airports, public and private at the end, are a business. And like every business, they expect to have profits. Thereby, we must reach a balance between uh, safety and finances. A, a, an organization must be profitable to continue operating, having a balance uh, with an acceptable risk uh, uh, operation. Implementation of risk controls has a price, money, time, or resources, but they're necessary to have performance and operational safety. Many administrators uh, have problems understanding investing in safety. One, once, I talked to a CEO who did not understand what would be his profit to buy equipment, mitigation equipment. So I, I told him his investment would be minimum if he compares this to the cost of the airport if an aircraft uh, falls. So to, it's important to compare and identify dangerous hazards and evaluate danger, what it can or might produce to see if we can produce them or mitigate them properly. Now, how do we implement a system of, of operational safety in our airports? Before implementing a system, we must carry out an analysis. It's very probable some of the SMS functions are already implemented. As Rodrigo mentioned, it's not new. And as it is, many elements we've been developing without specific names. The gaps analysis will help us to know where we are. And from this point, design, uh, an implementation plan that is functional and efficient, a plan that will give us a clear overview of the procedures, processes necessary to implement the system. The way Rodrigo mentioned in his presentation, SMS is composed by four components and elements. The first one, policy of operational safety objectives to reflect the commitment of the organization in regard to operational safety, the policies must include the policies to continuously improve operational safety to promote an operational positive culture within the organization. It must comply with the norms, requirements applicable. 
and must provide all necessary resources to deliver a product or safe service. It must guarantee that operational safety is, a, is the main responsibility of all administrators and last guarantee that we guarantee and implement it at all levels of the organization. Operational safety policies must reference the system of operational safety. It's the responsibility of the administration to communicate the policies of operational safety to, to the whole organization, to make sure that everybody understands it and they all work together focused on it. The objectives of operational safety must define what we want to obtain with the implementation of the management of the system. They must be brief statements and high level statements of operational safety of the organization. They must include the most important risks, obligation of accountability and responsibilities on operational safety. The, uh, the executive office, they have the responsibilities for the final responsibilities and the CEO or president must make decisions on behalf of the organization, must control the resources, financial and human, and this person is responsible that the proper measures are adopted to face problems in operational risk. Uh, uh, and he's responsible to respond to, to any incident or accident. It's advisable that this person is involved in the periodic high level meetings where we develop SMS aspects. This will allow him to revise the uh, operational safety objectives to observe uh, the performance and the achievements of the objectives. We need to adopt timely operational safety aspects. We need to establish the obligation to be accountable with the administrators in their responsibilities, performance, and implementation timelines of operational safety. And all staff must perceive this, that the executives or the CEO is interested in this. this. The CEO or top executive doesn't participate in the daily problems or operations at the workplace, but he must make sure there's, a, there's an appropriate structure. So he must delegate some of the functions to uh, some person or a group of persons, the following accountability aspects. The following aspects he cannot delegate to anyone. He must ensure that operational safety policies are appropriate and communicated. He must ensure the proper allocation of resources, financial uh, and others. Establishing acceptable limits of operational safety risks and allocation of resources for proper controls. Also, he has the obligation of being accountable in operational safety. He must provide enough resources for a proper or a good SMS. He must propose an operational safety that is positive. He must establish a proper SMS. He must establish operational safety objectives in the organization. He must ensure that SMS is properly implanted and, and works according to the requirements. And last, on the continuous improvement of SMS, all obligations of accountability, responsibilities, attributions must be established in the manual of SMS communicated to the whole organization. The obligation of accountability and operational safety and the responsibilities for each administrator are holistic components on the plans appointing key personnel of operational safety. The person that carries out operational managing functions is responsible for the performance of SMS and for the services of operational safety in the other departments of the organization. The manager of operational safety advises the proper executives and the line managers in managing operational safety and is responsible for communicating operational safety of problems to the organization and to external members. His functions are to manage the implementation plan of SMS and appoint the proper executives to facilitate, identify risk analyses, to control corrective measures and evaluate results, to provide periodical reports on operational performance of the organization, to maintain 
records of operational safety to plan and facilitate training and operational safety to provide independent counsel advice in operational safety matters to control con concerns hazards in the aviation industry and its impact perceived in the operations in order to deliver proper services he must coordinate and communicate on behalf of the executive uh, proper executives with other state entities on topics related with safety the manager of operational safety should not be involved directly in delivering products and services, but he should have practical knowledge of all of this. The Committee of Operational Safety, we must establish operational safety committees that support the functions of SMS throughout the whole organization. SRV is the Operational Safety Committee at the highest level. It's known as, as the Operational Safety Council. It's integrated by the top executive and superior administration participating as advisor, the manager of uh, operational safety. This uh, council deals with operational safety aspects. It allocates resources and looks into the performance of the organization. SRV controls the efficiency of SMS, the timely adoption of any measure for risk control or operational risk. It, it looks into operational performance as compared to the policies of the organization general efficiency of the strategy of mitigation, the efficiency of the operational safety managing processes like institutional priorities and promotion of safety. The SAC are the action groups of operational safety in charge of implementing operational safety strategies elaborated by SRV. Normally they're concentrated on the day-to-day -day operations. The SAP supervise operational safety aspects within the operational areas and guarantee that appropriate actions are carried out. They supervise operational data and they identify the implementation of uh, proper strategies. They guarantee that uh, information is provided to the staff and they look into operational changes they coordinate the implementation of corrective measures related with operational safety controls. They guarantee that these measures are made quickly. Another very important element is the coordination, a, a plan uh, under uh, an emergency, be it a public health, natural disaster, or an air disaster determines the measures that the responsible staff must adopt. Most of these cases, will demand coordinated actions between different organizations, possibly with other, other air suppliers and external organizations like emergency services. Coordination of planning of uh, a response to emergencies must be led by SMS that will align the plans of everybody involved. The last element of the first component is documentation of, of the SMS. The manual of SMS should include a detailed description of policies, procedures of the services, including policies, objectives of operational safety. Additionally, SMS also uh, comprehends compilation and maintenance of operational records that support the existence and continuous functioning of the system. Among the operational records of SMS, we must include reports, hazard danger reports, evaluation reports, revisions, audits, records for instructions of the staff, minutes of the uh, minutes for the meetings, and also and gaps analyses that we use. The second component is risk management or operational safety. The process for uh, risk management of operational safety involves identifying dangers, identifying and mitigating these risks. It's important to understand the system and its uh, operations for which we must come with a detailed definition of the system and interfaces. The identification of danger is the first stage of the operational safety risk management. We must develop and maintain a formal process to identify danger that might uh, uh, cause hazards or risks at all sectors and activities. It's important to consider 
the hazards or dangers that we can have with the in the SMS interfaces. Efficient managing of operational safety depends on the quality to investigate events and notify conclusions and recommendations so we can improve uh, safety. There are several sources to identify these hazards or dangers internally, externally, that can be used to obtain information. One, normal observation of the operations. Two, notification systems, voluntary, mandatory. Three, and uh, service operator information aspects. One of the main sources to identify dangers or hazards is an operational safety notification system, especially the voluntary system. Even though normally we use the obligatory system for incidents, the voluntary system provides an additional channel of notification of, problem, of possible problems or errors. It's important to provide proper protection to orient people uh, on site, emphasizing that the information that is notified will only be used to support improving operational safety. The intent here is to promote a culture of notifications and proactive notification of possible deficiencies of operational safety. The systems of operational safety, the voluntary ones, must have confidential character. This facilitates revealing dangers, uh, human errors, and not shame uh, people, shame people. Voluntary notifications of operational safety can be anonymous and Anonymous reports can support future analyses of trends to follow up on the efficiency of risk identification and identify emerging risk. To be efficient, the notification operational safety systems must be easily accessible to all staff. Depending on the situation, we, uh, we can use a template, a form, a paper on a website uh, or a meeting or a telephone call with a person in charge of SMS. And, we, we having multiple methods allows for more participation of the staff. Everyone should be aware of the benefits of notifications of uh, and what should be the content. It's very important to have feedback on decisions and the measure they are adopted. And even more so, we need to inform on new dangers or hazards that have been detected. So the staff will be, feel they're a part, a holistic part. And we will promote a positive culture and we will uh, Im improve notifications. Identify dangers and possible consequences must be documented. So later on, they're used in evaluation processes for risk purposes. When we carry out investigations for risk uh, issues, what we need is to understand what happened and how to prevent we don't have similar situations in the future by eliminating operational safety deficiencies that have been detected. We can also implement, develop investigations uh, where we could obtain better understanding of the facts uh, of the event. We could identify human, technical, institutional factors that contributed. We could identify dangers and risk evaluations. We could identify what learnings we had from the event and that should be shared with the members of the aeronautical community. The second element of the second component is the risk assessment. We must develop a model and procedures for risk assessment, operational assessment, to apply a coherent systematic focus to evaluate these risks. This should include a method that contributes to determine what type of what risk is acceptable or not and prioritize these measures. Once we have evaluated the operational safety risk, we should start a process of decision making based on data to determine the types of operational safety controls we must implement. The use of a risk matrix in operational safety will allow us to express the risk related with the identified dangers in a quantitative format but we don't always have the, uh, all the data we need for this analysis. So we prefer to have an expert's uh, uh, opinion here. Once we evaluate operational risk or hazard, we can implement proper controls. It's important to identify experts 
to identify operational hazards. So we, we need to ensure the participation of proper experts to mitigate operational safety or hazard. Before we implement risk operational controls, we must determine what consequences are undesired and specifically new dangers. Once we agree and implement operational safety controls, we must observe the performance here to ensure the efficiency of all controls we implement. We need to verify integrity, efficiency of the new controls of operational safety under real conditions. Component three, ensuring operational safety. Ensuring operational safety counts with processes and activities that will allow us to determine whether SMS works according to expectations and requirements. For this, it's necessary we, that we observe continuously the internal processes and the operations to detect changes or deviations that, that could involve emergent risks or deterioration of existing risk controls. Observation and measuring uh, performance and operational aspects to verify performance and operational aspects and to validate efficiency of risk controls it's necessary to use a combination of internal audits and observe performance indicators benchmarks it's important this is important because our application doesn't always reach what we expected internal audits will be of great help since they will provide the responsible entities and superior administration information and comments on the information on compliance of the regulations and, and policies and procedures, efficiency of risk operational safety controls, efficiency of corrective measures, and efficiency of SMS. Managing changes. Changes can affect SMS besides new dangers and operational risk could be introduced involuntarily in an operation with new changes. We should identify uh, these aspects to control them in time. For as change examples, we have the expansion or contraction, institutional expansion or contraction. Many airports are undergoing this because of COVID. Uh, entrepreneurial improvements that can have consequences these can cause changes to the processes systems to provide uh, services and products. Changes around the organization, changes around the interfaces of the SMS as external organizations, normative external changes. We can mention too, uh, constant uh, constructions in the aerodromes. Uh, here we would have many, many dangers that we must evaluate before we execute them. Continuous improvement of the SMS. Continuous improvement of SMS is supported by the activities of uh, to ensure operational safety. So we must verify and follow up on internal audit processes. We must recognize that maintenance and continuous improvement of SMS are permanent activities and the organization is constantly changing. Observation processes of performance and internal audits contribute to the capacity to achieve continuous improvement and performance in operational safety. Continuous observation of the SMS and risk controls and support systems guarantee that the process operational safety achieve the desired objectives and performance in operational safety. The fourth and last component is promoting operational safety. Promoting operational safety encourages a positive operational safety and contributes to reach operational safety objectives with technical capacities, capabilities that improve with continuous uh, capacity building. Promotion of operational safety complements policies, procedures and, and of the organization, providing values to support the activities of an organization. In regard to instructions, uh, capacity building, the manager is responsible to guarantee a proper operational safety capacity building. He must uh, provide appropriate 
information and pertinent information to the specific safety problems the organization has. To, he must count with trained, capable staff, competent staff to comply with his functions in the SMS framework. This is a commitment of the administration with the SMS. The instruction program must include initial instructions, periodic instructions to keep the proper communications. Periodic instructions should be concentrated on the changes that are introduced in the policies, processes, procedures of SMS. We should emphasize a specific problems of our, or obtain the teachings. Communications of operational safety. We must communicate procedures, objectives of SMS to all staff. This can be done through uh, notifications, bulletins, or instruction uh, notes. The manager of operational safety must guarantee that the capacity building from research, investigation, and practical cases, internal and external, and from other organizations, that this is all disseminated to all the staff. Thereby, communications for operational safety is in order to guarantee that the staff is fully aware of SMS. And, and the critical information is being transmitted and awareness is being raised on operational risks and corrective measures. And communications will provide new information and they will promote a culture of positive operational safety and encourages the personnel to, to uh, mention dangers and hazards. Activities for promotion should be done throughout the life cycle of SMS, not only at the beginning. It's recommendable to carry out periodically activities where we involve all the airport community. Uh, we should have tours of compiling information, uh, check into neighbors, look into uh, different dangers around the airports so that collaborators feel identified and the myth is broken that this will not happen in my airport. Safety is everybody's uh, commitment. Thank you. Thank you, Marilena. Before going to the last presentation of Daniela Roach, I want to remind you that questions will be carried out at the end of, uh, of the presentations. We thank you to send your questions to this uh, to this address on the screen. Next, Daniela will give us a practical example of our implementation in an airport in Jamaica. Go ahead, Daniela. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes, everybody. It is my pleasure to give you today a little background of our experience here in Montego Bay with the implementation of SMS. And to just tell you that, you know, we had a little, some hiccups and some bumps, but just to give you some lessons learned based on what our experience was. So, next. The first stage of building a robust SMS system is a construction of an implementation plan. Hands down, this is the most important document that you will have within your SMS, and it needs to be endorsed by your accountable executive. The implementation plan will be the blueprint for your SMS. While you ensure that what you do follows the guidance and regulations, so it's clearly outlined in all the documentation and your regulatory requirements, it is important to remember how your SMS functions is based on the complexity and the uniqueness of your individual airport. So there's no cookie cutter for an SMS. Next. So, IKO 9859, it gives you a brief overview of what the SMS implementation process should look like. I've tried to simplify it with a flowchart. Uh, Maria went through in detail what each component and element was about, so I'll skip that section, but just explain to you. So it starts with sorting what the components are. And these components, the next step is to um, define all the elements within these um, components. Once that is done, then it's kind of mixed in all together and then it filters through and then it's formed the four phases of your SMS implementation. So there's phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. What IKO recommends is that you start from phase one. 
we move on to phase two and use the information from phase one to help to build elements of phase two, phase three, and phase four. Next. What we did at MBJ was a little bit different. And that's just because um, we started a little while um, back, we started in 2015. And what we recognized is when we were implementing elements from one phase, we were touching on elements from another. So what we did was in year one and year two, we were actually looking at elements from phase one and phase two. And year three, phase two and phase three, phase four, year four and five, we were looking at elements from phase three and phase four. And we put it all together at the end of it. We conducted our gap analysis. We realized that really we had satisfied all the requirements and now we have a fully implemented SMS system. Next. Another example of where we kind of tailored our SMS system to suit our airport environment was that IKO requires that we establish a system to facilitate data collection. So we know that a system, SMS system cannot um, survive without information being poured into it and hazards being identified. So in de developing our safety data collection system here at MBJ, we had to consider the profile of our airport employees and decide what the best method of collecting this information would be. In addition, we have, a, so in addition to having a link on our website for persons to electronically log um, safety related information, we also put safety boxes, you can see on your right, um, an example of our notice board. So we put these notice boards with um, hazard boxes around the entire airport. It's land side, air side, as well as in the terminal. And this allowed us to get feedback from a wider cross section of airport workers. Next. So our, air, our safety committees, an S a SMS system and an SMS manager cannot survive without an active safety committee. Fortunately, at MBJ, we have two very active internal committees and two very active external committees. So the four components of our SMS are established through the collaboration of our safety review board, which comprises of our executives. So this is a high level committee, as well as our safety oversight committee, which comprises of our managers and our line staff. We also have our runway safety committee, which is a mix of all airport stakeholders and the airside safety committee. Together, we all collaborate to ensure that we maintain an acceptable level of safety at the airport. Next. So I'll go through quickly the four components and what our experience has been. So the safety policy, it states our commitment to achieving an acceptable level of safety performance. The challenge here for MBJ was making sure that we declared a promise that we could actually keep based on the resources that you had. And also ensuring that we met the regulatory requirements. My advice would be to keep it as realistic as possible. What you declare here, so what you say is what you will be audited against. Next. The next component is the safety risk management. So our initial challenge was associated with our risk management process was the execution of corrective action. Now, a lot of you are actively involved in SMS and you know this challenge. So what we found helpful was to create both short-term and long-term corrective action plans. And then we monitor for the effectiveness at the completion of each stage. So we phased in the corrective action and that helped a lot. Safety assurance, which is the heavyweight section of your SMS. Internal and external audits have helped to provide guidance and improve our system. Our management of change with the MOC procedure ensures that we consider the impacts of these changes through hazard identification and risk assessment and implement the necessary measures to ensure that we maintain an acceptable level of safety. And to your right is an example of our management of change procedure and we've put it in a flow chart just so that it's simple and this information is shared with all our airport employees, as well as it's located in our manual, of course. Next. Safety assurance. If you like statistics, this will be the very interesting part of it. In developing our safety performance indicators or SPIs, we considered global and regional indicators, as well as indicators that were specific to our airport. For example, we monitor runway and taxiway incursion, which is a global and regional indicators. 
We also monitored bird strike, which resulted in aircraft damage, simply because these incidents were increasing at our airport and needed some special attention in implementing corrective action, uh, mitigation measures, and monitoring for effectiveness. Next. Safety promotion. This component helps to nurture the safety culture of any airport, especially ours, through training and sharing of safety-related data. So the challenge with our safety promotion aspect is that persons within our airport have a fear of reporting. They don't want to be blamed. They don't want to be fired. They don't want to be sent home if they're involved in an incident or accident. So it was very important for us to spend some time and build the employee's confidence in our non-punitive reporting system. And always provide feedback. That's another key element. This helps to build the confidence of the system. So if persons are reporting information, they want to know that you have a system in place to collect the information, to actually provide feedback for them, and to give them an update on the measures that have been taken to reduce the likelihood of an incident or accident. Our Safety Week, which was extremely exciting, is one of MBJ's annual promotion activities aimed at increasing safety awareness among our airport users. During this week, the components of a highly functional SMS are demonstrated and explained. Through these activities, employees garner a better understanding of their role and responsibility, which aids in the overall improvement of our safety awareness. As I said in the beginning, we did have a lot of hiccups and there have been many, many challenges. So I've kind of outlined four of the most important um, and ones that I thought would help you in developing your SMS. So the first one, ensure that your SMS is developed based on ICAO as well as your local regulators, right? Keep it simple and make sure that you satisfy all the requirements of your regulations. We use Annex 19, Document 9859, as well as our local Jamaican Civil Aviation regulations as reference documents. So find out exactly what regulation, work, regulatory um, framework you operate within and ensure that you tailor your SMS to fit those needs. Second, a very big one. Have confidence in your SMS. As your SMS matures and is audited, you will receive an influx of recommendations. There's always an opinion and there's always something that will make it better. You need to be able to demonstrate that you are following your regulator requirements. However, remember that your SMS, how your SMS functions is a reflection of how your airport operates and the environment in which your airport is located. Thirdly, A big one, your SMS will never be perfect. In my opinion, I think airports delay declaring a fully implemented SMS system because they believe it's not yet perfect. The aviation industry by nature is dynamic, therefore making airports susceptible to incidents and accidents. SMS operates within the confines of this ever-changing airport environment. Therefore, there will always be the need to make changes. And this, will be done as we navigate through the process of continuous improvement. So it's okay to declare, it doesn't mean that it will be perfect. There'll always be room for improvement. Next. And finally, despite these constant changes, you ultimately want to create a system that can produce repeatable and consistent outcomes. This will demonstrate that you are developing a quality safety management system. That's it. Thank you very much for having me and we will facilitate some questions at the end. Thank you very much, Daniela, for your presentation. A practical example, how uh, learn lessons were implemented. We have time for uh, One question from Manuel Fonseca of Tocumen uh, to Rodrigo of the Regional Operational Safety uh, Commission. I think Daniela 
and also give us an opinion. Well, can SMS reach a maturity level without the support of the CEO of the airport? That's a question. Please open up your cameras. Would you like me to go first? Uh, well, well, I'm not, not that much of an expert in ICAO's documents, but the policy and commitment of the administration is there in one of the elements, but yes, due to other issues in the past, any change in culture in any organization, and SMS is a change in culture, so it all depends on the commitment of the high administration. Preferably, it should be the CEO the, uh, of the organization, preferably, but if not the CEO, it must be somebody who has a voice and, and, and power within the organization, decision-making power, but he must be fully committed with this. And uh, research I did in uh, other aspects to implement systems in, in different organizations or production controls and other issues or aspects, the commitment of the superior administration always appears there uh, as a very, very extremely important uh, or implementation process. It's uh, much more important than many other factors. If there's a commitment from the administration, uh, well, there will be resources, there will be enough time. So everything will be done possibly. So it's a very important factor. Thank you, Rodrigo. Daniela, you had the floor, you wanna add something? Uh, sure, I agree. Sure, I agree with Rodrigo. It, um, SMS does not operate within a silo. It really does take a team effort. And like any other team, the CEO is a leader. And look towards the CEO for guidance, as well as providing resources. So once you get your CEO on board with your implementation of your SMS, it's almost like you have the green light. It makes it much easier. Thank you, Daniela. Keep in mind, SMS uh, is his responsibility. If he doesn't agree with SMS, it will not advance. At the end of the day, that there is not a single accident or incident or issue in the best of cases in an airport, this will depend exclusively on him. And if something happens, he's fully responsible. So if he's not totally committed, there's not much to do here. Perfect, uh, Marilena. And uh, last question for Rodrigo. Why ICAO doesn't assign a term date so that international airports implement SMS? It's been more than 10 years with this requirement. Well, what happens, uh, how, how ICAO handles this? Uh, well, and uh, how I look at the system and, and my office and so forth, but also as an auditor, what happens is that ICAO doesn't set uh, too many term dates to implement um, when things must be implemented for ICAO uh, SMS should exist since we had Annex 19. Well, since uh, the Annex is out there, it's mandatory. But obviously, the states have their own laws and sovereignty to define, uh, to, to define this. 
but since it's already a standard of ICAO, when there's a, a SWOT uh, audit, there was a change in the audit model. And for a time, SMS was not included in the audit, but I don't know if it was due to COVID or not, but when audits restart, SMS audit will start again. And when this starts, ICAO will measure, uh, uh, they will audit the state, whether they are implementing uh, SMS in the international airports. And even though the state doesn't have a term date coming from ICAO, well, this uh, tells us about some uh, countries where some that have not implemented SMS yet. But this will impact on the result of the audit, obviously. There is no term date or maximum term date, but it, it impacts on the result of the audit, the way the audit, uh, the state aud audits the operator. So the state is audited by ICAO too. Thank you, Rodrigo. There are a couple more questions. Due to time uh, restrictions, we will ask Daniela a question here. Please, could you explain what the parameters are or the uh, elements that you use in your airport to determine what level is acceptable for every KPI? For instance, how do you define how many bird strikes are in red, how many are green, more or less uh, benchmarks or indicators, please? Your mic is muted, Daniela, please. Your mic is muted, Daniela. Sorry, thank you. So we use the guidance from IKO and the matrix that's located in 9859. And we look at the alert level criteria and we follow those parameters. So if in one month it's above the um, incident rates that is um, declared unsafe, then um, that's when we would put mitigation measures in place. If it hits our alert levels for two consecutive months, um, that's when we, we put another parameter in place to implement mitigation measures. And if for three consecutive months, um, it hits the first SDI, then that's when we put in our um, mitigation measures. So we follow those parameters. Thank you, Daniela. I believe uh, because of uh, time restrictions, uh, the, the other questions will be sent to the panelists. So you can answer them by email, please. Uh, on behalf of ACI LAC, I want to thank the panelists for uh, participating in the webinar and uh, for sharing your experiences. Thank you very much. As we mentioned at the beginning, presentations will be shared by email in the next few hours. Uh, also, the, the link uh, the, will, uh, you can uh, see this webinar again. It will all be recorded, up, uploaded. It's all recorded. Thank you. We see you. Have, have a happy weekend. Thank you, Daniela. Bye.